guys welcome to my channel uh i wanted to make this quick little video before the actual video starts and basically saying that i have been feeling very sick lately i've been doing a lot um and i have honestly been grieving uh and working a lot with my inner child i've been healing that a lot now and uh yeah so i've been going through a lot of emotions that's why i have not been uploading i'm so sorry but I will, I will come back with videos. I'll be consistent. But I thought this was nice uh, to come back with. This is like an event that I did uh, for my fans and my followers. It was completely free because I just wanted to give something, you know. And I really loved the event. And these are the questions that my fans asked and the answers that I gave, which I think can be helpful for so many people. Uh, I also wanted to add that obviously I love therapy. I'm in therapy, especially now even more with uh, my inner child connection. So I wanted to add that this video is sponsored by BetterHelp, which is also an online therapy platform. And as you guys know, I'm a huge advocate for therapy. So I just love BetterHelp because I think it's very convenient to find a therapist. It's online. You can message them. You can video call them. You can uh, talk on the phone. Like it gives you so many options to connect to a therapist. They have 30,000 therapists that you can choose from, which is also a lot. Don't like the therapist that they connected you with. They can, uh, you can switch therapists with no additional charge. So, you know, that saves you a lot of time, that saves you a lot of money. It's from the comfort of your own home. And I just think it's a very nice way to begin therapy and to find a therapist that you might fit with. To get started, you fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you'll get matched with therapists in as little as a few days. You can schedule video, phone, or message-based sessions, whatever you are most comfortable with. They also have an online journal that you can write in and you can attend group sessions. If you think that you might benefit from therapy, then please click the link in down description below or visit betterhelp.com slash wizard Liz. Visiting that link will give you 10% off your first month at BetterHelp and it also helps to support my channel. Um, this was amazing. Thank you so much for this. I think the thing that I want to hear more about, it's more like just wanting to elaborate. Um, I'd love to hear more about like the YouTube journey. So when you first started and you were saying you were scared to put out the video, was it something that you manifested? Like were you thinking that you want a platform but you're kind of scared or were you just you had one message and you wanted to put the video out. I'd just love to hear about what you were expecting. Okay, so this is actually, it's such a good question. So I was on TikTok, right? And I was already posting like on TikTok, like motivational content and like, um, just like quotes with motivation, whatever. And I had this one girl uh, who is a subscriber of mine, Homera is her name, she lives in the UK. I still talk to her till this day. I had an email that was put up there for business only. And she would email me almost every single day. And she's like, start a YouTube channel. Start a YouTube channel. Start a YouTube channel. And I was like, this girl is so annoying. I don't want to start a YouTube channel. And she kept going. And because she didn't stop, I literally started my YouTube channel. And even when I put it up, I was like, listen, at least this girl will stop emailing me, you know? And I'm going to put it up for two weeks. No, I'll see it. I'll delete it later. You know, nothing's going to happen. That's what I thought. But yeah, then it blew up. And I was like, oh shit, no, no, more people know me now. Now I have to, now I have to show up, you know. But throughout life, I was really guided to this. It's not that I manifested it. It was more like, I remember there was one woman that I watched. She had like a TED talk and she had like a book. She said, you have to take a book and you ask, have to ask for signs, right? And she said, like, open the book and like, kind of uh, like visualize your question and then open it and the first word you see or the first sentence you see is the guidance. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> and I opened the book and I did that and then it landed on the word media immediately. And I was like, uh, I don't like this. Anyway, so let's do it again. And so I did it again and I opened the same page and the same word is what I saw again. I ignored this, of course. I was like, ah, that's not true, you know? Uh, and then I had a psychic woman come up to me. I was like with my first boyfriend at the time. Honestly, my goal, I, I, I just thought the best I could do was just live off a man. 
and just he takes care of me and I don't have to do anything, okay? That was the thing that I was like, I'm, I, that's what I gotta do. I was sitting on the street, I was very depressed by the way. This was not, my soul knew that this was not what I wanted to do. But my mind was like, no, this is the best I can do, you know? But I, so I was so depressed. Even in this relationship, I was so depressed. And I was like sitting outside and she came up to me and she goes like, can I say something to you? Like I'm a sidekick. I'm like, oh my god, these people are crazy. Like, I always had weird people come up to me, or like people that wanted to read my hand. And then she came up to me, and she was like, you know, what you have right now in your relationship, she was like, you're, you don't understand how successful you're meant to be, mm -hmm. and how much bigger you are than this relationship. <sighs> so I was like, leave me alone, people. I was like, ah, I don't believe any of you. So yeah, God was literally speaking to me so many times through so many people. I had so much guidance, but I was always just ignoring it until that one girl, Humera, did not leave me alone, literally. Oh. Yeah. But I still talk to her every single day, so now I'm like, thank you so much. <laughs> the whole idea of like attachment and letting go of people. Like, you know, when you get into your first relationship or anything like that, like personally me, I find it really difficult to let go of people. So I'm pretty attached to who they are, and again, it's the whole idea of like I can't, I don't know how to let go, or I'm scared of letting go. Mm. Well, yeah, that's also that's very important. Letting go is very hard. I think the reason why it became easier and easier for me to let go is because I also understood I don't own anyone. They don't belong to me, you know. Everyone is a separate soul. They all have their separate life mission on earth. And I really started to understand that when someone leaves your life, it's time for them to go and they've completed their mission in your life. You cannot like latch on to someone and be like, he's the last person on earth. I cannot let go of them because maybe the one that's meant to be with you cannot come in then. You know, that was maybe this is what you're meant to be with and something so much greater and so much better, but because you're not willing to let go of that one person or that one situation, it will never be able to come in. You need to free up space so that other thing can come in for you. That's why I really realized I had huge attachment issues. Like any relationship that I had, I went into a relationship thinking this person will leave me and I don't care, but they will. Because that's, that's the thing that I've known from childhood. But then you also have to ask yourself, because I asked myself, why am I this way? Why do I not believe that anyone's gonna stay with me or like people are forever or whatever, you know? Then you have to ask yourself, why do I attach to that person so hard? Why can't I let them go? Because also most of the time, the thing that you're seeing in them is just a reflection of you. Every single person that you look at in life even, and like meet people you meet, they're all a reflection of us. What is it inside of that other person that you're not willing to let go of? Maybe something that you're not willing to let go of them is something that you feel like you're lacking. It's maybe not the person. It's maybe something that they make you feel. You're 15, you're very young. <laughs> so I think anyways, when you're at that age, I, I wasn't like that either. I feel like when you, you're older and stuff, you learn to how to really care for someone and how to really appreciate them in your life. But I also feel like it shouldn't come to a point where you're like, oh, I'm scared to lose this person. You know, I'm so scared. If, if I lose this person, my life will be shattered. Because that means like everything you have and who you are depends on another person. If that person leaves you, you don't have anything left. It shouldn't be like that. That's not healthy to me. But obviously you shouldn't also have the mindset of like, oh, I want them to leave or I don't care if you leave, whatever, you know? No, obviously you care for people. You, you like them in your space. You like them around, but it shouldn't determine whether you're happy or unhappy. For example, someone texts you and you're like, oh, I'm so happy right now. Today I, I have a good day just because that person texted me. It shouldn't be like that. You should be happy regardless. To me, it just sounds like you're just satisfied you're satisfied and like other people in your life add value but your life doesn't depend on it and that's healthy that there's nothing wrong with that you shouldn't change that believe me you'll go crazy if you change that <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> uh yeah you yeah how did you choose uh, a therapist um 
Oh my god, girl, you asked me another question. <laughs> this is what I'm saying, like, God guides you, okay? The, the way I chose my therapist, because my therapist is psychic. Um, she does soul healings. That's, that's the kind of therapy I've been doing for the past three years, is soul healings. It's not regular therapy. So it's like, um, it's also trauma, like a, you go into hypnosis and they heal like on the trauma level and like on the soul level. Because actually this was an African tradition before the colonization, uh, African shamans, they used to take soldiers that came back from the war and they used to do three months of soul healings on them. Because they said trauma is an illness of the soul and not of the body or the mind. Then after the colonization, they couldn't uh, continue, sadly, but my therapist, she does. She also knew how to do it. She's always been psychic ever since she was young. And the way I t met her was also, I started my first relationship, like my serious relationship with my ex, and then all of a sudden he gave me money. And I was like, okay, amazing. So I'm gonna take his money, I'm gonna go to therapy. And I just looked up like therapist, you know, and I found her. So I was like, oh, okay, nice, I'm gonna go. <laughs> and then I, I was sitting there and I was like, okay, what do I do now, like talk about my problems? I've never been to therapy, you know? And then she went like, oh, like, do you want a reading or something? I was like, no, reading? And then, because her, even her website name wasn't like psychic or anything, nothing. And I was like, reading? And then she's like, yeah, she's like, I'm psychic. Like, what? What again, man? I was like, I was like, okay. And then she was like, I do soul healings. And I'm like, okay, what are soul healings? I don't, I don't believe this, you know? And then she was like, listen, you paid already, whatever. And she's like, I can do a soul healing on you. And then when you go home, she's like, you're, you're meant to feel this, this, this. So you'll feel a headache in the car. You'll feel like this. And for three days, you'll be very like uh, this, you know? So I was like, okay, whatever, let me try it. And then she did like, whatever she did, I don't, don't know what she does. Like you lay down and then she does something with her energy and mine, I don't know what it is. So then I woke up from it, like I was not really sleeping, I was just laying and I woke up and she goes like, oh, okay, so this is what I found in your body. She goes like, you have a very big father wound and it was right here, located here. Then I, I uh, changed some neurons in your brain because your brain is also blah. I was like, what? I was like, no way, I don't believe this. And then I was like, okay, I was going home, but then she said to me, your head will start to hurt a lot. You will have a big headache when you go home. And the changes she made, and that happened. So in the car, I got a huge headache. And then like all of a sudden, like my body started to purge like the next three days. Like she said, I was very emotional. I was like all over the place. It was not normal. And then everything started to change. like. In miraculous ways. So the way I found her, I think truly I was being guided to find her. Because conventional therapy was not gonna work for me. Then I just went straight to the soul and it has been a crazy ride ever since. These things are like miracles, truly. Because even like, like this personal trainer and there's this woman and she's like, I do everything right, I cannot lose the weight. She's like, I eat right, I, I, I work out, I cannot lose the weight. And I told her it might be traumatic weight. Because I had the same issue. Like when I went to my uh, therapist, my digestion wasn't working at all. At all. And she also told me like, a lot of your trauma is stuck here in your womb. So I was constantly bloated. No matter what I did, it would not go away. And I could literally not go to the toilet like normally. And once she started healing and healing more, I started to see my digestion became like how it used to be when I was younger. It was very fast. So it became like normal again. My bloating went away. And now like even... If I eat unhealthy all day, like I don't gain the weight anymore. Because sometimes it's really traumatic weight. It's not because like, oh, you think like, oh, why can't I lose this weight? Or this is just how my body is. Most likely there can be trauma stuck in your body. And that's why you think, you think like, I don't look pretty. I don't look like myself. Because in your face even, trauma can be stuck. Your emotions can be stuck in your face. That's why I'm saying we're a soul and we're not a body. Whatever is going on in your soul will reflect physically. Can you elaborate more on how to, you know, adopt a more grateful mindset? Because, you know, for me, I kind of struggle to focus on what I have rather than what I don't have. Like, I'm always focusing on, on what I want to get or what I can't have right now, rather than focusing on what I've already got, you know. So, 
For example, I'd be so excited to get something, and the second I get it, it's, it's just it's gone. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm exactly the same way like that, like I used to be a lot like this and I literally had to teach myself on how to be grateful for what I have because I came to a point, you know, when I went the most viral on YouTube, I became depressed, literally, because it was so fast, like all the millions of people, subscribers came in and then I was like, it doesn't feel how it was supposed to feel, you know, it doesn't feel that great achievement, it doesn't. It just feels like nothing. And then I was like, huh, but I expected it to feel like something else. Or when I got something that I wanted for a long time, the, the, the process of getting it was nice, but when I got it, it was like, uh, okay, what now, you know? Like, okay, it's not that special. What I learned in life is stop putting importance on the thing or the goal. The most important thing is the process in achieving it because that is when you feel most alive. Me creating my YouTube videos, all these things, and seeing it grow, that was the nicest. But when it grew in one go, and like a lot, I was like, no, because the process, the process was different. It should have been more, it should have been little by little, and I should have, like, I think I would have enjoyed it more if it was gradual, than just like this, you know? So, whatever you feel like, oh, I'm not grateful, it's not like you're not grateful, it's more like you put too much importance into the outcome when the most important thing should be the process. So don't focus on, oh, when I get this thing, just be like, oh, it's going to be so much fun getting it, you know, trying to get it. That's the fun part. Once you get that thing, not special. N none of these things are special, especially in the world, like, because we're very materialistic, we're like, oh, if I have this car, if I have this bag, if I have all these things, I got everything I wanted so fast. Like my ex-boyfriend, he bought it like bomb, bomb, bomb. And like the first month that he knew me, he's like, oh, you want anything? Here, go. I buy you anything, right? Didn't like it. Most of my bags I don't wear. I, I don't care for these things anymore. But it was just the whole process of thinking how I would feel when I got it that kept me going. But once I got it, I also realized it's really not that special or that amazing thing. They used to always tell me like, oh, memories and being with family and loved ones, that's the most important thing and that's the thing that will make you happy. And I was always like, no, 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 a Rolex will make me happy, a Rolex. <laughs> but when I got the Rolex, I was like, mm, no, I was like, it doesn't do that for me. And right now, when I'm at a stage where like, okay, I have the money, I have all these things, the, mo the things I enjoy the most is just laughing with my friend, laughing with my sister, being around family, that, those are things that I'm grateful for. And all these other things, they don't matter and they don't make you cool, believe me. <laughs> I am stuck with everything and being angry constantly. It's, you are the only one that's getting punished. So I was like, how can I forgive this? And I came to a point where I just realized I started to have sympathy for him. I was like, you know, he never knew love from his parents. He was abused by his parents physically. So even though it wasn't right, it was the only thing he knew when he did that to me. So in my head, I was like, you know, how can I expect someone to love who doesn't know what love is? So the same way with you, for example, I don't know if it's your uh, friends that you have or people around you, you kind of, the only way you can forgive is when you have sympathy for them and you actually feel bad for them. That's the only way you can forgive because the reason why they're still hating, there are so many reasons, it might be jealousy, insecurity, all these things, you know? So you have to then look at them and be like, you know what, I just send them love. That's what I do to people now that hurt me. I'm like, I send you love because there's clearly something wrong with you if you have the need to put someone else down or if you are bothered by someone else's happiness or confidence, there's something wrong in you. I think you, you forgive those people by realizing it was never about you. It was about them. And whatever, whatever they need to work on, that's on them. But the only thing you can do is be like, you know, I send you love, love and light, and just focus on yourself. Because they're struggling with themselves. See those people, and this is also what I realized. Their life is so sad. What is sadder than being a hater? Like, imagine if I just think to myself, imagine I was a hater. 
read this somewhere. They said, God, uh, the biggest punishment God gives is making you a hater. You know? Because you have to go to bed and you're angry. You wake up, you're angry. You hurt people and you feel good about yourself. That's such a sad life to live. So honestly, the only thing I can have for these people is sympathy and be like, wow, I hope you heal. None of my business though, but I hope you heal. And another question is, um, sometimes I manifest something and what I get is you said it happened too quick. Like, okay, now I have it and what? Like, yeah, but see, that's also like, that's, that's why we put the expectations on it, right? We say like, oh yeah, it should feel like this and it should be like this, but then it arrives and it's nothing like that. So you should realize like, we don't know how it's gonna be. We, I don't know how I'm gonna feel when I get that thing. I don't know how I'm gonna act when I get that dream relationship of mine, whatever, you know? But you just let go of all the, all the thoughts you have or how it should be or trying to control the outcome. You cannot control it. <coughs> the only thing you can control is when it comes, how do I react? How do I behave like further? In the moment, you cannot control how you feel because whatever you think you will feel is not what you're gonna feel. You're gonna feel completely different. And you know, especially as like the older sister, I think my older sister relates to it, like constant this pressure of trying to be like the best, trying to show up for your younger siblings. It's a very hard pressure that like, I don't feel because I'm the middle child. And one thing about the middle child, no one cares about you, okay? <laughs> you will never be looked at, okay? So she also told me, she's like, Liz, I always like felt this pressure to protect and to be like the best because I, I am like the example. Until you're like, who told you that? What, just because you were born first, you think that you have all this pressure? No, it doesn't have to be that way, you know? Like everyone is just doing their own mission in life. Everyone has their own mission, regardless of like all these norms of like, oh, gender, all these things, or like, oh, positions in family, it's not real. You're just a soul, you have your own mission on earth. That's the only thing you need to focus on. Don't overexert yourself for things that are none of your business. You don't carry the weight of your family. You don't. No one does. Everyone is a separate individual that needs to fulfill their own mission. This is a very personal thing we have here on Earth. First of all, I wanted to thank you for all the great content you put out. Sometimes when I don't feel good, I just watch your videos just to remind myself of who I am. So thank you so much for that. And my problem, or my question, is that for me it's really hard to accept good things that come into my life. For example, if, I don't know, I get, can't really feel them because I'm so scared that they will get taken away from me. Mm -hmm. But they won't. Like, just because, for example, yeah, you're here, and you had this talk, you think I'll stop uploading on YouTube now? No. Just because yeah. you came here, <laughs> and you accepted this, you know, it won't happen. These are fearful thoughts, and it's also a lack mindset. Mm -hmm. You just think that one time you got something, okay, now I have to hold on on this small thing because I won't get it anymore. But you should actually have the mindset of like, oh, I got something good. I'm gonna get something bigger. Now bigger is coming. Like, show me how good it gets. That's how you have to think. I love this of you. You said, God, show me how good it gets. God, is. show me how good it gets. Yeah. That's what your mentality should be. If you are gonna be scared of losing something small, then you're holding on to that thing with fear. When you have fear, you're lower vibrational and something bigger cannot come in. You know how I think when I get something small, oh, it's only up from here now. That's how your mentality should be. Because that's also when you get more and more things because I'm showing God I'm willing to receive. All the people that are not willing to receive, I am, okay? So if you don't give it to them, give it to me, you know? So you should be just open and you'll get whatever you want. You got, you got whatever you want till this point, right? You know what I also realized? People have told us like, like life is suffering, people are bad, all these things, but they are all just to put fear in our head. Because when people are fearful, you can control them. See, if I was in power and I was in the government, I would be the worst person ever. I would manipulate everyone. And I would tell them, if you guys do anything, you're going straight to hell. You know, I would scare them so much. That's how I could control people. People that are liberated, people that believe in themselves, people that think like, no, my life is meant to be good, you can't control them. And that's the biggest issue. I have a second question. So I also, like, uh, my childhood got abused by my dad. Like, I grew up like,
like I had the tendency to like like people that disrespect me a lot mm -hmm. just because I feel really comfortable around them and like also the space they give me to prove myself to them because that's why I always had to do my childhood and I don't want to stay with those people or like attached to them because I know it's not good um, but it's what I know you know it's the comfortable so yeah it's familiar mm -hmm. yeah, correct well, then you should get unfamiliar with your things, you know, you should get uncomfortable because it is uncomfortable. I had the same thing. Like I said, like I was pushing my ex to do the worst things. I was like, please, no, it doesn't work like that. You, you need to take accountability for that. You can't say like, oh, this happened and this is why I'm, I'm going to continue being this way. If you actually want change, then do things differently. Even getting into a relationship with someone that does treat you well and doesn't do that, that's un being uncomfortable for you. But staying I there, <laughs> yeah, you run away. You're like, ew, <laughs> ick, no, disgusting. Yeah. No, it's not like that. I don't feel attracted to a person that treats me good. It sounds so bad. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I swear, with my ex, I had, I told him I fell in love with you after one year <laughs> because in the beginning I was constantly just cringing. Okay, I was like, why are you telling me nice things? Why are you doing all this stuff? I thought he was love bombing me. That love bombing lasted for three years, so I was like, okay, whatever, he's not love bombing me. But I was like, something must be wrong here. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, like something must be wrong. He's playing an act. He's not really being serious with me. That was constantly through my head. But then when you stay in a relationship like that and a person just consistently shows you love, that's when you also start to believe it. Because that is also one thing that I tell people, especially when they come from an abused childhood, be with someone that didn't experience that. So, for example, my ex came from stable house uh, childhood, like very good. He, he, his parents were amazing with him. He was raised very well. Because of that, he was like the stability that I needed, because I was viral. But because he was stable, even though I found this man so cringe, <laughs> the cringiest man on earth. <laughs> I still, it helped me so much in literally healing myself because I allowed him to love me, which was very strange for me, you know, and I allowed him to be cringe and whatever. But that's what you should do, especially when you're from an abused childhood. Do not, even though we are attracted probably to people that are also from an abused childhood, then it just becomes so destructive. Even if your boyfriend, for example, is like that, it's also not wrong. You can stay in the relationship. But make sure you have someone in your life that is stable, that has like a stable mindset or I has want to become seen. that person. Huh? I want to become that person that becomes. Yeah, famous. but but look at someone to be like that in your life first, because yeah. you you will get there. But who are you gonna look at if everyone in your life is suffering? Where do you look to find some comfort? You know, where do you get some hope from? Who gives you hope? And different things that I didn't do, they told everyone that I didn't do it on my, I did this kind of thing when I actually didn't. And it became like a whole scandal, and like a rumor that this, this, this. And everyone who didn't know me were talking about me. And I don't know what to think to not be able to be hurt. But you know, one time I saw a painting and the painting said like, there's one thing worse than being talked about and that that is not being talked about. Like, imagine how boring of a person you must be that people don't want to talk about you. They don't want to say anything. They're not gossiping about you. Like, how unimpressive are you? It's always the people that are either very beautiful, very successful, or like they have something that others want that gets spoken down upon. This is a part of life. This is also what you will have to accept. You might have this now only in school. This will happen throughout your whole life. At work, everywhere. People, they talk, talk, especially when they're threatened by someone. So don't take it too hard. It's like a compliment. Duh. Like, I want to be talked about. I love it. Like, that's what I crave, you know? I don't want people to stop talking. And then, and then, what, then what do I do? How am I the wizard of this without controversy? It's a part, it's, a, it's also a part of how you stay relevant, because it's also another thing that I learned uh, when I started in the media space, everyone is trying to stay relevant. These people pay PR teams to 
create fake news stories, even if they're negative, to just have like people talking about them. This is what they actually do. And I was shocked when like my agency, they told me about it. I was like, there's no way. They're like, yeah, and, and you know, the things we create are so like crazy, we don't even understand how people believe it. But that's how they see relevant. Because there's one thing, yeah, in order for people to keep engaging with like famous people, there needs to be controversy about them. There needs to be people talking about them. Even if it's negative, it doesn't matter. Uh, negative press is also good press. This is how they live. Can you imagine people are paying just to have people talk about them? This is how important this is for them. So whenever you see like people gossiping or creating things about you, you're just that girl. You cannot change it, okay? Except that you're that girl, okay? I even look at you, you're very beautiful, okay? That's normal. People are going to talk about you. you know, everyone wants to talk about pretty privilege. Well, there's a very ugly side to pretty privilege too, you know? People will hate you for no reason. You will think, oh, I was so nice, this and that. Yeah, but people always see you as the... As a beautiful person, you're always a threat. People will talk about you. And that's okay, that's life, you know? If you're successful, people will talk about you. Any reason they can find. Nowadays, men will hate on you because you're a woman. You know? Men will create stuff about you because you're a woman. That even happens. So, just accept that that's a part of your life. Now, is it gonna hurt you? Yeah, obviously it's gonna hurt you. But don't, like, demonize your, those emotions. If you feel hurt right now, okay, be sad. It's normal to feel sad. It's normal to feel betrayed by these things. But just don't dwell too long on them. Like I said, don't take other people's opinions as your reality. Just because they created a rumor about you or said that you're this way, okay, but you're not. You know, you have to know who you are. So it doesn't matter what they're saying. <laughs> so it all starts by selling your soul. <laughs> so, basically, <laughs> so basically, how you can attract money? Money is basically an energy, right? Money is not special. This is also what I started to understand. Because everyone thinks like money, all these things. Money doesn't exist. So right now, if like the big bank say, whatever you have in your account right now is not worth anything, it's not. You will not be able to buy anything, you will not be able to do anything. Not with the cash, not with anything. So they have that power. So what is money then? What is it? It doesn't exist, okay? It's not backed by anything, it doesn't exist. Money is actually an energy. So the more you do something that you love and the more influence you have in whatever you do, the more money you will make. I was uh, reading this book and they were talking about this uh, teacher. And she was like a teacher, she was making like a good amount of money, all these things. And then she's like, but she's only teaching for 25 children, okay? And she has created this book that was so amazing. Every child loved it. And her parents would come, they would be like, why aren't you getting paid more? Like, this is amazing, you know? And then she was like, yeah, I don't know, whatever. And then basically what she did was like, she changed the influence. So she started to publish that book worldwide. And now millions of children were reading that book. Now, it was, it was important to millions of children. So then she also started to make millions because of your influence, okay? I know oftentimes we say, like, oh, doctors should earn more, teachers should earn more. You have to think about how much are they, oper how many people are they operating, you know? 10 people a day, they get paid for those 10 people a day. That's the money they attract. But then they say, like, oh, singers, why do they get so much money? Why are they millionaires? they impact hundreds of millions of people. There is people that literally, they play songs on repeat because their heart is broken. They've helped millions of people. That's, that's why they're millionaires. They get paid for their influence. If you want to get paid more, how much is your influence? How many people are you helping right now? probably you have a bad history with or they you know that they want to try to ruin your career life or in general a toxic manager but you just have to go through it and deal with it when you especially when you are at work you should just think like i'm coming to work i'm coming to earn money for myself this is all about me anyone else is just a side character in your life but you're the main character it's not about even controlling your emotions you're you're just not letting others influence them 
if you have like a toxic manager or whatever, like, okay, whatever they're saying in my head, you know, I used to work the shittiest jobs. I worked every single shitty job ever to make money when I was a student, okay? I had the worst managers, people were so disrespectful. And I was just like, I don't care, I'm here for my money. Like literally, I do not care about another person because I just want to make money. The only way how you can like control how you feel is because you don't have to put too much emotions into it. You know, it's your job. You have to make sure you're doing a great job. Whatever your toxic manager is telling you or some rude colleagues are gossiping about you like boring, okay? Like you just have to focus on what am I here to do? What do I want to do? How do I want to feel today? And that's how you control everything, how your work day even goes because you don't let other people outside you influence you because you are in control of yourself. You know, it's just sometimes it's just the competition that makes the people ugly. Mm -hmm. So how can you deal also with a tough competition? Because we're in a city where literally everything is a competition and it can get heavy, like mentally heavy. But who are you competing with? With me, with my old self. With your old self, with yeah. With my past self. Well, then it's you versus but you. It's just you know, all the influences outside can take a toll on you and on your progress. Yeah, but see, this is what happens, especially when you start to be better in life and you start to do anything that's better, you're going to have constantly people tell you, oh, you're doing too much, like, calm down, humble yourself, you know, you always hear these things. Don't let them influence you. Like, this is, this is what I mean, like, you guys, like, haters. And people that want to bring you down, why do they want to bring you down? Because they're not up there. They're not there. I'm not going to hate on you. I'm going to want you to be up there. Because I'm up here, you know? I want you to be here as well. People that are down lower than you are intimidated. And those are the ones that want to pull you down as well. Because they feel like, how dare you do better than me? And this can be anyone, by the way. This can even be family members. This happens. They get jealous. They'll try to be like, oh, no, don't do that. Oh, no, you're losing weight. No, 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 you look better, you know, when, either when you're unhealthy or whenever you're changing something. But don't let that influence you. You have to have a clear mind of, okay, this is where I want to go, and this is where I'm going to go. Anyone else shouldn't be able to influence you. When I was starting out my social media, everyone was telling me, let's stop. This is so embarrassing. You're embarrassing your whole family. Stop, you know. I was like, no, I'm not gonna stop. I don't care anymore. This is what I want, and this is what I'm going to get. So no one could influence me, no one. And they tried, believe me, very hard. I didn't stop, and I didn't listen to them. Because this is what I wanted. When you are very clear about who you want to be and what you want in life, you don't listen to these people anymore. They become like, nye, 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 like that, you know, <laughs> literally. You just walk into that workplace and you do your best, okay? You're there to make money. You're there to like evolve in your career. Competition doesn't exist, you know? Who, who are you competing with? You should all be competing with yourself. You walk in there, like you're the boss, you know, when I was at work, when I was a student, I used to act like I was the boss. And literally people would treat me like I was a boss. Like I had like, I had one student job where even like the managers were afraid to tell me something. Because I would act like I literally own the place. <laughs> and that's what I'm literally saying. Like, if you act like you are who you think you are, it's really true. Like, other people adapt to you. If you're going to focus right now on all these other people around you and your colleagues and all these things, they will probably, this will amplify. You have to be careful. Because, like, literally, in my previous job, I was kicked out because somebody literally hurt me behind my back, not in front of me because you can't face me. So you have to be careful and you have to guard in the next journey to not make this happen and be aware of your surroundings. That's so true, but that job was also not meant for you. If yeah, you get kicked out like that, it was not meant for you. I, I'm in a better everything, but I'm just telling you like how people can get... Like even in like my student jobs that I used to have until like the last one that I ever had in the restaurant, Oh, I would, I would get fired all the time, every single day. I would get fired every day. And it was the worst situations, even with, with like some female bosses that saw me, didn't like me, fired for no reason, even if I did a great job. But I was, I was meant to be fired because I needed to come to this point. I was not supposed to just work for someone. 
and I didn't get it at that moment because I was thinking like, oh my God, like, what, am I not good enough for anything, blah, 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 you know? I was thinking that, but it was never about me. There was a bigger plan. This is what I say, like, you think so small and God, like, huge, you know? He thinks huge. And sometimes you think, like, oh, why did I not get that? You're meant for something bigger. If you're kicked out from a job, no explanation, something silly, it was not meant for you. Not meant for you. So that's how you cope with failures, basically. Yeah. It's not meant for me, that's why I failed. And but then, why is it a failure if it just was not meant for you? You didn't fail. It was not for you. That's okay. You know, yeah. so in life, things are just not for us sometimes. Yeah. People are also not for us. No matter how hard we want to force it, they're just not for us. Yeah. That's okay. Like, we really need to start being okay with that people will walk out, jobs will fire us, we will not get whatever we want. You need to start being okay with that. Because when it comes to you, it's not like a shock. It doesn't change your whole yes. like reality, whatever, you know? You're, you're just gonna be like, oh, okay, happens. Let's move on. You're welcome. <laughs> Anyone else still have a question? Yes. yes. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sir. Sorry. Yes, thank you for sharing your journey. It's really inspiring and uh, helping a lot of people. So what would help to know for many is uh, how did you come out through your uh, darkest times? What were the exact steps when you couldn't move on uh, physically, emotionally? What did you do exactly? Like uh, you mentioned affirmation, journaling. What do you think was the, the best way for you? Um, for me, honestly, I, because I was locked in my room, right, for two years where I had like so many issues. The first thing that I did was just go walk in nature because I used to not leave my room. So this was a big step for me. So every day I was like, okay, you're gonna walk now in nature, you're gonna do these things. And also like, I needed to heal my eating disorder. So I, then I tried to like eat like one meal a day. Then I was like also just telling myself like constantly like, Liz, you are amazing. Like in the room, I was like, oh, you're so beautiful. You're so amazing. You can do big things, all these things. And I kept reaffirming them also to myself. Um, I started really like, asking God for things, that was also a big shift in my life because before I used to never ask. I used to only like go complain when something went wrong. I was like, oh, you're so bad. Why did you do this to me? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, then I started to just like every day literally talk to God like he's my best friend, literally. And I was like, oh, this is what I want. This is what I want to like uh, achieve. Can you help me? Um, this and that. And it really started to work. So that's why I'm always saying, like, see, throughout life, I was really guided. Mm -hmm. And when I really started to listen to the guidance and also accept help from other people, because I was not willing to accept anyone's help. I was not willing to, like, be like, oh, yeah, uh, come and help me, because it would make me feel weak. But then I was like, no, I need help. Anyone that can give me help, I need help, and I'll accept it. That's what I started to do, like, be receptive to help. And I started slowly changing that's when I started to believe that it can get like bigger and bigger and bigger and then it just never stopped. Mm -hmm. And how did you change your subconscious beliefs, the strongest beliefs? Did you need therapy or you had some... My strongest beliefs, I really changed them by first recognizing where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Who told me that? Like who told me I was stupid? Who told me that I was not worthy of these things? Who told me that if this person leaves, I will not get something else? So I started to be like, is this my thoughts or did someone tell me this? So when I recognized this, that was the first thing. And then the second thing was just reaffirming to myself. You know, in the beginning when I was putting affirmations to myself saying, oh, you're so mesmerized. I didn't believe anything of this. I honestly, I didn't even care, okay? I was just saying that to myself. But then I also noticed the more I started saying affirmations, I really start to believe them. For example, say like, God, show me how good it gets. And something good would happen. Maybe it wasn't God, okay? But I started to believe more and more, like, oh, this works. So good things I say, they do happen. That really changed my whole mind. And also by not like looking at like very negative stuff on social media. And I actually started watching like educational stuff. Like what, what can I learn, you know? Because it's so easy these days to like just be on social media, scrolling. And this is by the way also one thing, and I want to tell you guys like, the more you're on social media, just scrolling, the more you're gonna compare your lives and the more miserable you will be. Because you're constantly seeing other people and it's so much. 
and everyone is apparently living a better life than you, you know? And even if you think that you don't get affected by this, you do. A couple of uh, weeks ago, I started like scrolling on TikTok a lot. First of all, I've, that's the dumbest I've ever been because my brain was so fried, like day in, day out, it was just fried. There were no thoughts there. And second of all, I also noticed I started to like compare myself with like other creators. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, I never feel this way. It is because of social media. It is because you're constantly, you're almost like pushed to compare yourself. And I think once again, like the people in power, how do you control people? Make them depressed. Make them see other people constantly that are living better than them. You know, back in the day, if, I think even our parents, they didn't have this issue when social media wasn't this big. Because who are they gonna compare themselves to? Well, Khadija down the street? Oh, okay, amazing, you know? That's one person. But now you have millions, millions. It's too much. So that's why comparison, all these things, all these like social media apps, they're gonna cloud your subconscious mind. Even when you think it doesn't, it does. It does. And then you start to be like, oh, I'm just an insecure person. No, put your phone down, you know, watch other stuff. That's maybe why you're insecure, because you're constantly seeing other people living the high life when most of the time it's not even true. Okay, thank you so much, because you actually helped me so much in the past eight months. Like, because of you, like, I started talking to trees, putting my back against them. Oh my god, I have crazy, crazy people here. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone is like in the woods, so I'm like, okay, that's, those are the woods of this path. <laughs> no, but like seriously, like, you inspired me to go to therapy, we had like really similar upbringings, and like, I'm gonna cry thinking about it, but I certainly want to say like, thank you. Aww, you're welcome. Thank you. You're so beautiful.